Thanks, thanks everyone, and thanks for that wonderful lunch and bottles of wine. It's always great to, to present after, after lunch. So I think what I'm going to do is just to make sure that we have some energy, I'm going to do something very different. I want everyone to stand up. Come on, stand up. I want you to think of one word that summarizes the event so far. Think of it. And on the count of three, I want you to scream it as loud as you can. Yes? Okay, you ready? One, two... Three. Awesome! What did you scream? <laughs> awesome. Uh, you heard me. Okay. Think, think more because I'm going to do the same at the end for the next speaker. Okay. You can all sit. Thank you. <laughs> uh, just as an introduction, I'm not going to spend too much time on myself. Uh, just one line on my company. We reach over 2 billion people through our influencer network. Um, I love being at this conference. I don't know much about apps, but I see huge synergies between what we're doing and what you guys are all doing. So I'm hoping uh, after the session, you'll see the same synergies. Something that you won't know about me is I have three kids and a dog named Whiskey, a little Boston Terrier, a very cute guy. Um, that's something you won't find on Google. So let's start. If you think back to when you just started walking, what's the first lesson that your parents taught you? Okay, you don't have to answer. It was never talk to strangers, right? And what do we as the whole ad industry do? We try and talk to strangers, right? Um, so let's just unpack that a little bit. Um, we've come a very long way since traditional broadcast mediums. Uh, you guys are experts at it. Uh, imagine a lady, she's coming in from the rain into a store. The, sh the storekeeper sees that she's soaked and he offers her an umbrella. So that's context, right? Learning from environments uh, and offering relevant information and offers to our consumers. The next thing we added is obviously she comes in again. We now know who she is. So we added personalization, which, you know, uh, particularly in the app economy is something you guys can leverage and which you do leverage. But something is really missing from this picture, uh, which influence a lens. So I'm going to play you a, a one minute video clip. point. So what's missing from this picture? I'm not going to ask you to answer, but it's basically trust. So that's a mechanism. Just by putting a piece of gum in your mouth, you can relax yourself and gain trust without even doing anything. What an amazing experiment and actual ad from Bell Dent. So now I want to ask you, you can't buy trust, right? But do you actually have to earn it? So that's a clue. But we're going to run an experiment now again, just, just when you thought you were getting comfortable. Um, I'm going to ask you which candidate won the U.S. local state elections. Okay, so you're going to have to stand and sit, so don't get too comfortable. I'm going to show you two pictures on the screen, and let's show them. I want everyone who thinks the older guy won, I want you to stand, 
and the, the person who thinks the younger guy won, you keep, you, you keep on sitting. Okay? Okay. The older guy won. Okay. Another, another experiment. You ready? Who won? The lady? So if you thought the lady won, stand up. <laughs> okay? Very good. So you guys are getting good at this. So not knowing anything about what they stand for, their policies, nothing, you predicting who's winning. That is, that is interesting. Okay, we're going to do one more. Okay, if you thought the lady won, stand up. Interesting. And you're right. <laughs> Unbelievable. So I've just demonstrated something to you. Now I'm going to ask you, <laughs> which one would you trust? <laughs> J-Lo? <laughs> yeah, don't ask my wife. Um, yeah, so, so it's, quite, it's quite evident who you're going to trust, a celebrity who's paid to do something or uh, the girl around the corner or next door who you know and trust and believe. If I come to, to Jerusalem and I ask you where's the best place to get coffee and you're from Jerusalem, I'm going to trust you 100%. But how do we actually leverage this? So this is data taken from our platform, 26 million posts showing you the audience size versus engagement, and it's very evident the smaller the audience size, the higher the engagement. And this was actually done um, before we got access to TikTok. So what TikTok have actually been able to leverage is they, they operate on the left side of that graph, right? So they have very small influencers and creators with huge engagement. And, and they've managed to get that right. So just one point that, that you need to remember now is that little left block there, nano. Nano influencers, influencers that have less than 3,000 followers, that is the future. And I'm going to show you just how you can unlock that. Um, but cool, so engagement rate is one thing. Does that mean it can translate into actual transactions, into ROAS, um, into sales, into installs? Uh, and how do you do this at scale? So that's what I'm going to try and illustrate for you now. This is Elysium Health. It's an American health company. They, they sell um, vitamins. And uh, this is a campaign where they did exactly that. They took uh, user-generated content from nano-influencers, influencers who are passionate about cycling, used that content at scale, running ads on Facebook and TikTok, and managed to improve the cost per acquisition by 2x. That's something quite interesting. Okay. In the gaming world, Chef did the same thing. They took nano influencers interested and passionate about food. This is a restaurant tycoon game. And they did the same thing. They took uh, user-generated content from passionate small influencers and managed to 2x their ROAS uh, with a seven-day click attribution. Some other metrics which are important here, 9% conversion rate, which is much better than they did before. And the other interesting metric is the sentiment. So when you do a brand ad, you know, uh, particularly if you're running them on social platforms, you're going to get, ah, uh, your app doesn't work properly, or I didn't get my goods delivered. With, a, with an influencer-sponsored ad, you don't get any of that. So the sentiment just goes through the roof, and that kind of fuels your OS, uh, you know, even more. Last example, takealot.com. This is an e-commerce platform, the biggest in Africa. 31 times their OS by using the same approach. So taking user-generated content, uh, interacting with their online store, and then pushing that into a paid ad on the social platforms, and the uplift was 31x, which is absolutely unbelievable. But just to go one level more uh, you know, deeper, a little bit more granular, this is what an e-commerce dashboard would look like and how it actually works. So... For example, and this is a real-life example, I've just removed the brand. Uh, this particular brand spent $82,000, and they achieved a ROAS of 241. How did we do that? Okay, You see a list of influencers here, and you can optimize content, so which content works the best for which influencer on which channel. And when you can optimize those parameters, you can achieve a huge lift in performance. And... So, so if, you, if you have the right technology and the right people to try and execute this kind of campaign, it can definitely work. So how did we get here? What, you know, where does this all come from? I thought I'd unpack a little bit the evolution of Influencer and why, why we're seeing these kind of results. So you know, just to start off and summarize, you have your traditional uh, advertising, 
cost of content production is massive. Think of the old television ads. The reach was massive, and you see the little blue block there in the audience. That's the trust. Uh, where, you know, they obviously drove you in store to the shelf to purchase, and you were referred by word of mouth. Then came digital, so a little bit cheaper to produce content. Your reach wasn't as big in the early days. Your trust slightly improved. You could transact online, eventually through e-commerce, and customer reviews is what gave you your referrals. Then came mobile, even cheaper to produce content. Here, you have the, the added benefit of adding personalization and probably a whole bunch of other attributes. You then can do in-app purchase. By the way, the purchase uh, column is not exclusive, so it doesn't mean you can't push a person to an e-commerce store, whatever it is, to, you know, to check out. And then customer review and referrals it, it, you know, is one mechanism of, of referring. And then came Nano, which I've just illustrated, an influencer, which is even cheaper form of producing content. Your trust is massively amplified. Your reach is decreased. So now how, you, know, you need to do this at scale. And you can drive the purchase through what's called a distributed link. This link can exist on any app, on any page. You can even drive it and deep link it into an app. And the social proof and the community is what actually refers uh, you know, purchases. Interesting, another thing I thought I'd unpack is that referral. So if you think of this as an iceberg, you, know, you guys know the attributes of an iceberg. It's under the water that really counts. Okay, so, so let's just overlay a couple of data points here. Open social, which is the ability to share any information into a social network, it, it acts uh, many to many. Your conversion rate and engagement rates are, are fairly low. At the surface, I like to think of this as closed social. So this is when you're sharing an app or a piece of information to a friend in a direct message on an open uh, social platform. And then under the water, can anyone guess? You've seen the presentation. <laughs> Dark social, exactly. So this is when you copy and paste a link and you're actually sharing it with a friend through WhatsApp, Telegram, email, or whatever that may be. So this is one-to-one -one or one-to-few if you're part of a group or a community. High conversion rate and very high engagement rate. So you guessed it, dark social. 84% of sharing is in dark social. So it's, it's not tracked, it's not spoken about, but this is a massive opportunity for all of us to leverage. Um, you all know this guy, who knows this guy? What's his name? Ari. Ari, fantastic. So I met Ari Monday night, we had a couple of drinks, and I won't get dirty, Ari, where's he? <laughs> I'm gonna keep it clean. So I learned that Ari is an avid cyclist, rider, mountain biker. And I think we went to bed at like one, half past one in the morning. Not that late, I did. <laughs> he woke up at six to go for a ride. I was like, wow. Um, so that's Ari. That's something I don't know if you guys all knew, you know, you didn't know about him. But there's something else you didn't know about Ari. Again, I'm keeping it clean, Ari. <laughs> Ari is a nano influencer. Okay. So I actually had an injury recently, about a couple of weeks ago, I tore my meniscus and I had a surgery, and I have to start riding to rehab my knee. So when he told me about this, he showed me, he actually showed me, when we, when we were talking about it, showed me an app of the ride that he did. So there's me this morning, hey Ari, I hope you slept well, how was your ride, and what was the name of the app you used? And there he is, morning, good ride, wish I had more time and a better bike, the app is Strava. Okay, what he could have done is he could have shared a link for me to go and down, download that app, right? Um, next time he will. Um, the point, though, is, you know, so, so you can do, there, there, uh, there are lots of options to drive app downloads. That's just the way we do it in Nano. And how do you scale this? So what Ari, I'm assuming, if he's a, a, an avid rider, he's probably part of a couple of riding groups, right? Um, and he has the ability to now push information into those groups, which can then drive whatever objective we want. And that's, the, that's what we call nano social. So we're leveraging offline, pretty much, social to drive back online. Quite powerful. So a lot of the people I've spoken to at this conference have actually run influencer campaigns. Let me see by way of hand, or I've tried. Yeah, pretty much everybody. And typically, when talking to somebody, these are the kind of attributes and, and things that are going through their minds. So I need one big influencer who is in my industry 
and he's going to get me that reach, and he's going to drive installs. I'm going to leverage his, he, you know, his reach. Um, typically, then it's very expensive. It's only for big brands. I have to pay per post. Um, you know, some celebrities charge like millions of dollars for like a tweet. It's ridiculous. Um, and then it's a once-off campaign-based approach. So, am I launching a new app, uh, or is it a new season, or whatever it might be? But how this comes into a performance channel is by leveraging the smaller influencers, the nano influencers, right? It has to be driven by technology because otherwise you can't do this at scale. And what you're leveraging is the authentic social capital that every person has in whatever interest, you know, if you think about what you need, you're gonna ask a friend, which phone am I gonna buy, which car am I gonna drive, whatever it might be, uh, you, you know a friend who, who uh, is an expert in that domain. And so then this becomes for any business, it becomes a targeted medium that you can actually drive sales and, if, and, and in some cases actually pay per performance, which is interesting. And then of course it shifts from a once off campaign into an always on spend. So how do you make a, a successful influencer performance program? I've narrowed it down to four pillars. The first is obviously a tech platform. Uh, the upside is obvious, it's, it saves you time, it saves you money, you don't have to recruit uh, you know, influencers, you don't have to contract and pay them, and it manages the whole workflow of content approval. So you've got to have a tech platform to start. The second is inventory, in our world that is influencers. Now, some people think you need millions you know, of, of influencers as, as inventory, that is just not the case. What is important is that the influencers are opt-in. That means that they've linked their social channels, they've agreed on contractual terms, um, and they're ready to work. So typically you can turn around campaigns much, much faster. If you try and use a non-opt-in base, it's, you're gonna struggle to actually contract and connect with influencers. And that's, a, that's really where a lot of brands actually fall. The next pillar is strategy. So great, you've got the tech, you've got the right influencers, now what are you gonna tell these guys to do? And what's interesting here is I've put in brackets there on demand. Because in truth, Ari knows about riding and, and what his friends want to know about riding better than Strava does, I can tell you now, or better than the guy trying to sell them a bike. So bring your influencers into your world, your creators into your world, and ask them what the strategy should be. They know how their audience would react better than we do as brand. And so I call it strategy on demand. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. And we have a lot of focus groups to actually enable that for, for brands. And then the last one is, and the most important one, and this is where nine out of 10 brands fail, is if you get all three of those right and you can't execute at scale, then it's, it means nothing. So your execution partner or your in-house team is super important. And then I've put there plus paid because organic isn't big enough, right? You need to integrate into ad networks, into your social platforms to leverage that at scale. And even when you do that, you should see an uplift of 20 to 30% just by running UGC compared to branded content, which is super interesting. And then lastly, why is the app industry poised to capitalize on Nano? So just from what I've observed over the last couple of days, you're coming from an age old display push to mobile how do we apply trust, context, and personalization? A lot of you guys are doing that. I'm seeing that in apps, but how do we do it even more? Um, so that just by looking at something, you know, you, you're gaining the trust of the user. It's a pity you can't get your app to chew chewing gum, but um, that's, that's what you need to do. The next one is moving from a high cost, celebrable branded content to low cost nano and user generated content distributed through ad networks. So I would say you have to figure out how you're gonna leverage dark social and use your ad networks through paid. And then of course, retention through app and game tactics versus how do you get the retention built into your community? So I'm gonna end off with one last interactive story. Who can tell me what this is? This is the fastest growing sport in the world. And this is actually how I injured my knee, by the way. Um, so why I've put this in is because the app that is, that is fueling this growth is an app called Playtomic, which comes out of Spain. They've, raised, they've just raised 50 million euros, and let's just unpack why they're the fastest growing app, or why it's the fastest growing sport. So firstly, in order to book a court 
anywhere in the world, I have to use the app, right? They're going to get a cut of that, by the way. Uh, when I have to pay for the courts, I'm playing with three of my friends. We all split the payments and we can pay. And lastly, I want to add my results. What was the score, right, of the game? Because I want to, you know, go up in my rank um, and therefore it becomes sticky. So every time my friends are playing, if I miss out, I'm going to lose my rank. So, so, so this is a great example of how um, these guys are leveraging the community to actually grow which is really what you want, your own customers. And that's it. So let's all stand up to end off. <laughs> Think of that one word. No, different one, different one. Okay, you ready? You got it? One, two, three. Very good, Nano. Okay, thank you guys.